Hey everybody, Daniel from Space Doc here, and I just wanted to do a brief unscripted short explaining the exact process of landing and eventually taking off from the Battlestar Galactica or any other colonial Battlestar or carrier in the Ronald D. Moore reboot canon. This is because I think a lot of people confuse the sets that we see of the flight deck with the interior of the actual pod itself, which is of course depressurized. But I'll start with the process at the top and explain it through for you all. So as we see in the miniseries, we get a look at Leah Dharma performing a manual hands-on landing on the Galactica, which is of course the only kind of landing that they can do on the Galactica because Adama has ordered the removal of all the auto landing systems. But in this particular situation, the Galactica is idling and it's at condition three, so there's no danger of an attack or any kind of problems. So Lee slowly tea kettles in on his RCS, taxis over to this lift on the deck of the depressurized flight deck, clamps his fighter down magnetically onto the lift, and then is immediately lowered down into the long under deck hangar area, which we often see in the show with Chief Tyrrell and the very other characters there. Now obviously there are only so many of these lifts and most of the time in the show we see high speed combat landings where in order to escape a situation quickly all the pilots are basically forced to fly into the deck and just slam the magnetic landing gear onto the deck and be scattered around in various states to be collected later and slowly moved over to this lift. When this happens the ship just jumps with all of the pilots still stuck there out on the deck waiting to be recovered because there just simply isn't time for each one of them to taxi over and be lowered down by the two or three lifts that are available. Now I must say I'm not entirely convinced by the whole combat landing thing all the time. Just because the reaction times these fighters have, it doesn't seem like it would take a huge amount of extra time to arrest your momentum and then very quickly but very carefully touch your magnetic landing gear down to the deck rather than slamming into it at full speed. Especially given that they need to preserve the structural integrity of their very limited supply of vipers in the Galactica's situation. But regardless, I can certainly understand why getting out of the area quickly would be placed as the most important priority in this situation. But if I can backtrack a little, I want to talk about what the actual approach signals mean and what some of the wireless chatter you'll often hear in the show is actually referring to. Now, for example, here we can see Cat and Starbuck approaching the flight pod in Acts of Contrition from Season 1, and we hear over the wireless from the landing signals officer, Viper 791 Galactica, you are cleared for approach, speed 175, port bay, hands-on approach, check is green, call the ball. Now, to go through what this means, obviously the port bay of the Galactica is the only bay that is usable because the starboard flight pod was converted into a museum, so that's pretty self explanatory. Viper 7901 refers to the tail number of Cat's Viper. Speed 175, of course, refers to its current velocity. Hands-on approach refers to the fact that there is no auto landing because it's the Galactica. Checkers Green is one of the situations where Battlestar takes an existing bit of military jargon and changes it a little to indicate that it's a different universe or whatever. It's basically just saying the board is green, as in everything is fine. There are no problems on the flight deck. And then the last one, Call the Ball, refers to this string of signal lights that we see at the base of the flight deck. This is the ball, and it's basically a reference point that can be used for the pilot to adjust their glide entrance into the bay to ensure that they're approaching and are in no danger of striking the walls or anything like that. So when the pilot says, copy Galactica, I have the ball, they're confirming that they are on the right trajectory, they're not in any danger of breaking off suddenly. Interestingly, in case any of you didn't know, the Galactica's landing signals officer, Captain Aaron Kelly, is actually third in command of the whole ship, despite the fact that he spends all of his time down in a little pod in the hangar deck. He outranks even Lee up until the season 2 episode The Captain's Hand when Lee is promoted to Major and in fact in the episode I think The Valley of Darkness we see Kelly brought up to act as the executive officer for a while because Adama is in a coma and Ty has taken command but anyway that's where Kelly is most of the time and that's why you don't often see him on the CIC or anything because he's down in his little pod giving flight instructions to landing pilots now the lifts that are used to lower the Vipers down to the hangar deck are also used to launch Raptors because Raptors of course aren't launched through launch tubes although interestingly if you do look closely at the 3D model of the Battlestar Pegasus, it actually has one Raptor-shaped launch tube on each flight pod, so I guess it can launch Raptors through a tube, in case it ever needs to do that very quickly. But the Galactica does not have that. It needs to slowly lift its Raptors up on lifts, and then they taxi out under their own power. But Vipers, when they're launched, or when they're relaunched, having been quickly refueled and rearmed, are launched through magnetic accelerator tubes, which we can see here. They run along the same hangar deck that Tyrrell hangs around on with his staff, etc., so that as soon as these fighters are crewed and manned and fixed, they can be immediately rammed into a launch tube and fired out without taking up any space on the deck or interfering with anything that might be currently landing and be immediately positioned to help protect the Galactica. Now, as you can see here, along the top, there are actually some docking collars within the inside of the 
depressurized area of the flight pod. These are used to dock large troop transport ships, which we don't see happen very often in the show because of the civilian fleet situation. But in the miniseries, we actually see Colonial One dock to one of these ports. So Colonial One can just about fit inside the Galactica's port flight pod. But after that, almost all transfers between Colonial One and the Galactica are done using raptors or shuttles, presumably just to make sure that this deck isn't held up because placing Colonial One in the middle of this flight pod would basically render the entire thing unusable if they were in combat. There's no way anybody would be able to make a landing. It would certainly be very difficult for Vipers to get around it being in there, and it may even block up some of the lifts to stop things like Raptor launches. You can also see that there are a couple of military-grade transport shuttles kept aboard the Galactica, but we almost never see these used in the show. In fact, even the most mundane transfers seem to be done with Raptors. Even when Lee was going to the Cloud Nine to take his shore leave in Black Market, he was taken there by a Raptor. So I assume the Colonial Fleet adopted some policy of constant Raptor taxiing for officers during the Colonial Fleet situation in the Exodus. Now, as a last point, I should point out that the Mercury-class Battlestar Pegasus actually has four flight pods, or two double-stacked flight pods, taking advantage of the fact that you can, of course, attach a runway or deck in any direction you'd like to a spacecraft because there is no up or down, except relative to the ship's artificial gravity in this case. Now, this doubles the amount of storage space the Pegasus has for Vipers and allows it to launch them twice as quickly from multiple points of origin. The only question it does beg, though, is how do they bring the Vipers and the Raptors to the correct orientation when they are reintroduced into the presumably uniform artificial gravity environment of the hangar decks between these two sections. So presumably the Pegasus has a row of hangar decks, much like the Galacticas, where Tyrrell hangs around, between each of the two flight decks on either side of the ship. We never see this in any real detail, but I can only assume that the lifts on the deck of the ventral hangar bays feature some kind of mechanism to rotate landed craft through 180 degrees before lifting them upwards into the artificial gravity environment so that when the pilot and the crew of the Raptor or whatever hit the gravity, it isn't hitting them backwards. They're they're not going to feel like they're being hung upside down. They're just going to be slowly introduced into a normal gravity situation. Obviously, having a complicated ship flipping mechanism like this probably has a lot of points of failure and requires pretty constant maintenance, but it's probably a worthwhile price for having twice as many flight decks and therefore twice as many strike craft deployed twice as quickly. But there you go, that was my sort of directionless talk about landing on battle stars there. Please do let me know in the comments if you have any interesting points on this topic, or if you have any other more obscure technical areas of sci-fi that you'd like to hear me sort of talk off the cuff about. But again, thank you very much for listening. This is Daniel from Space Doc, signing off. Thank you for watching Space Doc. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share for more science fiction spacecraft summaries. If you enjoy the channel, why not consider pledging your support on Patreon? For just $1 a month, you'll be able to access the Space Doc schedule to see what's coming up.